Welcome back. This is uh, Bill and Diane and Ken and I uh, talking again about uh, holiness. And we have a wonderful question uh, for our uh, discussion this week. Can an entirely sanctified person sin? Now, I would guess that's a question any Christian has asked probably many times. Uh, We want to begin by uh, giving a definition of sin, and then we'll uh, kind of launch out from there. Uh, Sin can be defined as whatever breaks man's relationship with God and causes separation between God and mankind. And I would just say uh, right up front, yes, of course, an entirely sanctified person can sin. We believe that also an entirely sanctified person is able not to sin. Let me throw that at you and see where you want to take it from there. Thank, thanks, Vern, for the easy question. I love that. I'll let Diane start no, on that start. one. <laughs> um, let me go back a bit. I'm sorry sure. for this. It, to me, that question borders on how you view reality. And I've been intrigued in the, since the Reformation began that we seem to focus on God's grace as this sovereign sort of determinative reality that I must have to be saved. So it removes me, because I'm such a sinner, where we hear over and over again, that I can never re- respond to him, so he's got to determine that I'm saved and keeps me saved. And my question is, what, what, when did I stop becoming a person? You know, every, all we're talking about here is all personal. Sin is personal. Mm. It's a person choosing yes. the, to refuse the love of God. I, I don't want your law. I don't want your way. I, it's a person. I wasn't made to do that. I wasn't formed to do that. It's my choice to do that. So when he saves me, it's, of course, all of his grace, but I respond. And so there's got to be at least the logical allowance that a person who responds can stop responding if you're going to retain personhood. If I become a block or a brick, well, then I'm just going to be saved. But biblically, I see there always are persons growing in love or not growing Mm -hmm. in love. Mm -hmm. So there's a dynamic in this whole thing called salvation. Yes, he's the savior. Without him, I am lost, but he wants me to be engaged personally. So that's where I go. Sin is unlove. Salvation is holy love between persons. And uh, so that's, that's kind of my groundwork. And of course, I don't want to argue that somebody can sin or they're going to lose their salvation. That's, that seems to be the, the, the way we go to stop the, arg- stop the discussion. My point is, no, sin is I've chosen to curve in on myself yeah. rather than to let his self-giving love flow through my life. Yeah, I've heard that it's it, uh, identified as choosing the absence of God. Uh, you know, well, there you go. You know, I don't need as him. opposed I don't to have his presence in our lives continually. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's yeah. um, Dennis That's exactly Kinlaw right. defines sin. Like when you read in your Bible and you see sinful nature or the flesh, depending, carnal mm-hmm. nature, depending mm-hmm. on your translation, this was so helpful to me that sin is not a substance that's added that like this virus that creeped in and like this thing that's yeah. in there mm-hmm. that we have to get it out. Kinlaw, and he's a Hebrew scholar. He says, no, sin is what you just said. It's the absence of the loving presence of God. Mm-hmm. That's what sin is. And so when you choose not to be dependent upon God, you choose not to walk with him. I know a lot of people who think, well, when I was eight, I went to an altar, or when I was at youth camp or whatever, I went to an altar, I was saved, I'm good to go. And I'll just, and God has to forgive me because by his grace, he has to when I ask him to. And I'm just going to do my own thing though. I'm just going to live my own way and I'm going to expect to go to heaven. And yet I'm going to say to God, get your hands off my life. How dare you tell me what to do, or how to live? So that's it. That's a false way of viewing reality. That's it. You're creating an absence of God in your life if you're just saying, hey, God, I got this. I don't really need you. Mm-hmm. It's that and corrupt nature that you're talking about yeah, that's still there that we can— We can always do that. We can easily do that where we say, oh, wow, I was just running my whole ministry without you. And we understand sin to be intentional yes, and willful. Uh, in our tradition, and I think that's uh, thoroughly biblical. Uh, Vern, that's really helpful, because I was going to go there, too. 
it seems to me, if I'm hearing what my, my culture around me says is, even evangelical culture, the only hope you have in life is to be a sinful person. So the Lord has to, by his grace, cover you over with his righteousness. I've even heard people say this, the Father doesn't see you because you're covered by Jesus and his blood. So you, you're never going to be changed. Your sin is always there. You're a sinner saved by grace. You're covered with the blood of Jesus. So the Father looks at you, doesn't look at you. He looks at this son. I'm thinking, well, wait a second. That's not personal. It's not real. And I don't think it's biblical. Uh, it, we're not, when, when salvation comes, he changes the essence of who we are by his essence, his grace, his life. So it's not just a covering over and I kind of wobble through life. It, I can live, as he gives his grace, a, a holy, sanctified, heart filled with perfect love, and my essence can be changed, the nature of who I am. I don't have to always be a sinful being. I can be one who walks with him in love. I think that's an important discussion to have, especially in the modern church. There seems to be, it seems to be a lot of confusion about sin and what it is and how it's dealt with. That doesn't I, mean I can't ever sin, but it, it means I can also be changed to, to not have to sin every time. In terms of being an entirely sanctified person and sin, what I am I actually just still learning this, trying to work it through, but when I define what holiness living is. I define that as being a person who knows they're desperate for God. They know they are. And they know that what pleases God most is when we realize we're completely dependent upon him. And we cannot live as we ought. We can't do it unless we are living in this continuous mutual intimacy with him. And so as a sanctified person, that's how we live continuously in his, and it's, we know we're pleasing him just because we say, I need you. And then what I have noticed in my own life, the more intimately I walk with him Mm. and in entire sanctification, he has more access to me to whisper in my heart, Diane, what was that? What did you just say? What is that resentment in your heart? I think an entirely sanctified person is one who lives so intimately with Jesus that the Spirit has even more access Mm -hmm. to reveal, Mm -hmm. and he names it sin when he's talking to me. And I I love that with him. I love my relationship with him when he can speak and say, you're not treating Bill correctly. And I say, oh, you're right. Thank you for telling me. And he cleanses my heart. He changes me. So I think there's more growth and more ability. Once you're entirely sanctified, the growth is just huge. And that includes being able to admit when he sees sin. And it may be not like committing adultery. It's different kinds of stuff. It's, It's your attitude, your heart. And I, I love think that. You, I think you're telling the rest of the story. Yes. I think uh, the part of the story that everyone seems to understand is that our sins are forgiven when we receive Christ. But that's only half the story. Uh, people fall into the habit of confessing their sin, getting up, sinning, confessing their sin again, and it becomes almost normal. And they're missing what you just described, and that is that the Holy Spirit gives us the power not to sin. That close communion. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the part of the story uh, when we start talking about sin that I always want to focus on. We can live by grace and resist sin, but it's by the power of God's Holy Spirit. You know, there are involuntary transgressions. Mm-hmm. There are mistakes. There, 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 But there's not the willful transgression. Exactly. Right. And, uh, and I think the one thing I wanted to say, when you're talking about sin— that is a, that's not a subject that's talked about anymore. We soft pedal the idea of sin in Scripture and what it, what it's, how it's taught and defined uh, in this yeah. modern culture. We do. I had a, an officer, a, a pastor, look at me a couple weeks ago and say, why do you emphasize sin so much? We don't, we don't do that here. We focus on mm-hmm. grace. We focus on Jesus. Yeah. 
And I was so taken aback, I, yeah. I didn't know quite how to respond. And I did respond, but I, since then, I've looked every day in my devotions and thought, well, sin is on every page of <laughs> right, the Bible, right. for <laughs> crying out loud, and yeah. so is grace on yes. every page. So it's, it's, a, it's a reality we have to look at. Let me go back one. I wasn't clear earlier. If we look at ourselves as essentially sinful, then really no salvation is really possible except what God does to impose himself on us which I feel like many people talk like and live yeah. like. I think we're talking here about a much more relational and dynamic reality where he can have access to all of me and any place where my heart is curved away from him, he can reorient that mm-hmm. to be a heart that is curved out, outward in love. And this is daily. Culture. It's Absolutely. daily. Yes. It's continuous and it's love. We don't sin willfully because we love him. We don't sin willfully because he loves us and he's pouring himself, which is love, into us. That's what First John would teaches. Any, yeah, would anybody want to talk about the, the idea of what the Spirit's uh, role in, you know, living with the spirit, a Spirit-filled life in Absolutely. that, um, you know, we yes. can maybe, we have sin in our heart, yet it's not on the throne. It, it doesn't control us. The Spirit of God living in us, and as Diane was indicating how sensitive your heart becomes as you get closer to the Lord, and that's a that's a Holy Spirit work. Yeah. Well, I've been saying uh, recently, not just to new Christians, but to all Christians, we need to re-meet our life partner, <laughs> which is God the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, read Romans 8. It, he, yes. He is the power within us, and we are in a living relationship with him. I always love to listen to Diane uh, talk because uh, I feel like I'm, I know I'm not as intimate with God as I need to be when I listen. Mm, yeah. But uh, to get up every morning and be turned toward God, uh, John Wesley has an interesting sermon entitled Repentance for Believers. Mm-hmm. And uh, repentance means to turn toward Just God, turn. and we live lives of mm-hmm. repentance. Mm-hmm. I get up in the morning and turn toward him and depend upon him and speak with him and share with him. And at the end of the day, I lay myself before him. And uh, if there right. are things he brings to my mind, I need to confess. I do. Mm-hmm. And I go to bed at night. And we live lives Amen. in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. which is the only way. We know there's right. Romans right. 7, right. Vern. There's Romans 7. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, there's Romans 8. And he, he brings us out of that and victory and flourishing, Absolutely. as you mentioned. And just like in, in Genesis 2, the Holy Spirit completes us. Yes. We are complete, holy, shalom, blameless, perfect. All those words mean complete. We're not complete because my heart's whole. My heart's undivided. The only way my heart's undivided is when he completes me. And we breathe him in. And we breathe out his life of love toward others. Wesley calls that spiritual respiration, complete uh, dependence on the Spirit. Yeah, I, I don't know if we've mentioned Pentecost yet, but I feel like that's also a yes. key here, is that I, I remember the day it shocked me when I realized that Jesus rose from the dead and his disciples were with him 40 days and they weren't changed. They were still afraid. They didn't lead one person to Christ. There was no outreach no response to his commands. He's with them 40 days and they're still not changed. So he go. He says, unless I go, I can't send the Holy Spirit right. to you. He, he's now with you, but he, when, he, when I leave, he will be in you. And when that occurred, then this, this constant sinning, this constant self-curvature was dealt with in a fundamental way, at least in some of the folks in that upper room. And that is the reason why we're here talking like we're talking, because they said, no, this is, this is a real life. A holy life is possible because the Holy Spirit is in me. He's the one who's convicting, loving, cleansing, keeping my heart clean, filled with perfect love. That's a dynamic which many yeah. of, I think, the church has somehow missed. They've not had a real true heart Pentecost. Yeah. And that's the key to all this, I think, we're in terms of not sinning in the, that volitional way we're talking about. Yeah. And I think that's the heart of the answer to the question, how can I be entirely sanctified? Uh, By the power of God's Spirit, as I mm-hmm. seek Him and allow Him to have His way. Forgive me if I've gone out of my lane here, uh, but is that another, we're having another session on that, I think, some week down the way, aren't we? Yeah. 
Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, for me, it's important to understand that holiness and entire sanctification is more than power over sin. Mm-hmm. We have power over sin because God himself loves us and has filled us with his life. It's a life of freedom and joy and love mm-hmm. in the Spirit. Then we have power over sin. To me, mm-hmm. that's the, we have to keep first things first. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, we do know that sin is a very important uh, part of uh, a Christian's attention. And uh, the answer to our question is that uh, an entirely sanctified person need not sin by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Well, we will uh, be back next week, and we're going to ask the question, as I remember it, (laughs) how can I be entirely sanctified? God bless you.